What up folks, this is Augie of Your Two Cents. Shave the head. Hope there's no uh, hairs popping out. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit different uh, review. Uh, this is the Perfume Guide 2018 by Luca Turin and his uh, lovely bride, I believe. Beloved, let's just go with Beloved, uh, Tanya Sanchez. And it's a dandy of a book. Uh, I used to have the original Perfumer's Guide, and somehow it got lost in the move, so I need to repurchase that. Uh, I found that kind of handy to have around. And uh, like the cover, it took me a while to realize that was uh, uh, the little strips uh, to smell fragrances. I'm a little slow. So, uh, yeah. Where to begin? Let's see. Luca Turn. Uh, basically, uh, I'm going to use an analogy here with this gentleman. Uh, when I was in the Marine Corps, my last year, I was stationed in Japan and I bought a stereo system. I believe the best I could afford was the Techniques, which you're saying, well, that isn't that good. But, you know, basically back in days of yore, uh, 1990, uh, you know, not so much online sales, uh, it was hard to get the cutting edge things in the Midwest. So I was in Japan where many products were made. Uh, so this was a pretty impressive uh, system, and uh, also uh, I wanted to get the Yamaha, but couldn't afford it, so yes, I went with the Techniques, uh, and then I got the studi Studio Monitor SM80 Infinity speakers that were just amazing. I, I need to buy a pair if I could find a legitimate pair. They were just very powerful, very good for uh, rock, pop music, but now that my taste has expanded, I think they might work for for other genres. Uh, the point is, when I got home, uh, you know, I realized my father, uh, in his own way, was an audiophile, and uh, the thing was, that was the best I could buy. Uh, my father uh, built his stereo system out of vacuum tubes, uh, you know, quite a few years before, and then I have since learned that, you know, there's a kind of a mythicism about tubes, and anyhow, but he built his own, uh, and really, uh, it worked for the home stereo for quite uh, several years. Uh, sounded pretty good, really. Uh, had, a, had a warmth to it and all. Uh, but the thing was, my dad built it. Uh, as far as a fragrance reviewer, reviewer and Luca Turin, uh, he's sort of like my dad. I mean, he could probably make his own fragrance. I don't think it would even be, uh, it would be child's play for him. He's a biophysicist. Uh, I believe in the Emperor of Scent. I, I read the book. Don't know if I fully understood it, <laughs> but you know, basically he has a theory of how the brain, uh, you know, picks up smells and how our how that sense sensory system works. Uh, you know, knows quite a bit about about that, and uh, you know, a lifelong uh, fraghead basically. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's like. He knows way more about this than I do. Yet at the same time, I do have a love for fragrances, so keep that in mind. Uh, also, the number of scents that uh, him and his uh, partner in crime have uh, smelled is uh, a ton of uh, gallons upon gallons of fragrances. So uh, throughout his lifetime, so yeah, that's uh, that's uh, quite a big deal. Uh, another thing about the guide, and I will get into actual parts of it. Uh, he does have some negative reviews in there, uh, but keep in mind, the medium's different than YouTube. I mean, if I would put out a lot of uh, negative reviews, you know, uh, one, you know, I guess you could kind of alienate yourself of some of the newer uh, fragrance uh, manufacturers, but I'm sure they'd still sell you samples or whatever. Uh, but also, I don't know, it's just, it's just uh, if I don't like something, I just don't review it, uh, whereas, you know, this medium, uh, any review is probably worthy of putting in a book, so, you know, it also fills space and you have pages that get filled up, so I, I can kind of see uh, the need for that. Um, you know, but keep that in mind, when he's reviewing all these fragrances and he smelled so many, uh, there's some negative reviews, okay, and uh, sadly, I, I shouldn't say sadly, it isn't probably so much an amazing thing that there would be negative reviews by Luca Turin. Uh, what would be sort of amazing is that he has five-star reviews of fragrances that are still 
uh, you know, just came out, you know, which if you think about that, I mean, he has been around doing this quite a while. So, you know, keep that in mind. There's some darlings of the FragCom uh, in here that do not get a lot of love. Uh, you know, the, some of them are the more uh, high-end uh, niche type uh, fragrances, uh, which don't bother me too much because I can't afford most of those. Uh, but then the other ones are just independent makers who are just starting out and, uh, you know, come on, man, they're just starting out. But, you know, he's honest. He's honest. Uh, he, he didn't like some, uh, but then when he does like it, he'll be honest about it. So, uh, let's just get into it. I wanted to kind of compare my reviews to his, uh, the few that overlap. Uh, both essays at the beginning by uh, Tanya Sanchez and... Uh, Mr. Turn are very well worth reading. Uh, you get some good knowledge of what he is considering. Um, and I'll just give you an example. Uh, Aqua Amara, this is my little travel pack one here. I love it. Uh, I'm going to read it real quick. He gave it four stars, uh, put it down as a bitter citrus. Uh, in the buoyant years following World War II, there appeared in Italy a series of delightful masculines based on pine and citrus, most famous Silvestre, which I do not have by Victor. Uh, while intense on the top note, they faded away rapidly to a quiet dry down. Uh, they were intended to broadcast the sort of intimate elation one feels when the sun shines bright and the wa shower water is hot and abundant. Times have moved on. Pine and citrus are now largely regulated to functional fragrance, and both cheerful masculinity and undershirts have gone out of style, I guess. Uh, what's a gleeful guy to do? Bulgari and perfumer Jacques Cavalier. Cavalier, he, of the sublime but doomed Fou uh, probably pronounced that wrong, may have found an answer. Guy La Roche's Horizon, 1993, and more recently the appalling light blue DNG uh, are already, had already gone there, but this one actually works. Aqua Amara plays the woody citrus accord in minor mode, makes the lemon so dry that no one will think of Eau de Cologne adds a complex cluster of abstract watery notes that go on forever and turns the volume right down. Clever, interesting, subtle, especially when sprayed on fabric. Uh, Jeremy Fragrance recommended it, and I like it too. That was my commentary. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, Aventus. And I'm going to quit reading it after this one. Uh, he gave it four stars. Citrus Forger. Uh, this creed creed seems to have a receded the creed creed seems to have receded somewhat lately its followers mellowing from unhinged loons to mere swivel-eyed fanatics I have always been skeptical of creed's pattern perfumers by appointment to a variety of dead people who can't demur and less than impressed by many of their purportedly superior fragrances kind of like the fragcom uh, we're in step there aventus is a hugely successful masculine and has been described to me by otherwise sane women as irresistibly sexy. So a sniff on my part was in order. It turns out to be very to be a very nice, dry, citrusy, citrus fruity, with an impressive ability to radiate a warm, spicy aura all around. Good stuff. Uh, what the ladies say uh, is what I'm going to spray. Another wise man said. He has a little bit of that in there. Uh, also, with all the reviews, when it says LT, that's Luca Turn. When it says TS, that's uh, Tanya Sanchez. Uh, keep that in mind. And now we're going to have to go through the ones. Ah, oh, here we go. And well, this is what I was, uh, was saying about the young reviewers. Uh, Carpe Cafe, don't have my sample here, uh, by Gallagher Fragrances. Three stars, vanilla coffee. Uh, despite my hardened prejudice against coffee fragrances, I have to admit. This one actually works really well, partly because the materials used are of sufficient, sufficiently good quality that a garish flavored coffee effect is avoided, and the ambery, uh, ambery dry down is nice, Luca Turin. Uh, so yeah, he does look at like Gallagher fragrances, and uh, I think he, Gallagher does pretty good. Uh, I mean, you know, it, there's some he likes less than others, but he seems, you know, to give him a nod. Uh, Zoologist, uh, I personally thought took pretty good beating. I have never really smelled any of those fragrances, but he did really like one a lot. Uh, I don't know, Frederick Mall, which is not a, a small house, but uh, some of those, uh, you know, not, not liked. Uh, imaginary Authors didn't do too hot. Uh, 
And there's one I'm forgetting, but uh, let's see, do I have it written? No, 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 no. No, <laughs> not risk written down. Uh, but yeah, so, you know. But, you know, that's a three star review uh, from a guy that has smelled almost everything. Uh, so it seems. So I don't know. Uh, take your. Take your. Uh, Knox with that one. And this is weird because I can never find this. Uh, I had two Larson fragrances uh, that I really liked, I brought to you. And uh, here we go. Boucolise de Provence by La Artisan Perfume. Two stars. Soapy leather. Not unpleasant, but confused lavender leather affair. There you go. You have two stars. Uh, even worse, I think he kind of slams Nior Esquisite. Esquisite. Um, probably saying that wrong again, but I am from the Midwest. Let's see here. Where are you? Alphabetical order. Here we go. Noir Exquisite, Lardison Perfumery. Uh, Anisic Woody, two stars. A mishmash of no discernible aim and no discernible budget. Confused and unpleasant, reminiscent of scores of other brutal, milky, woody masculines. Tanya Sanchez. Uh, then, Replica, by the fireplace, is what I thought that smelled like, and this is a good example uh, of Luca's uh, disdain for certain houses. Replica, by the fireplace, Mason Martin Marglia, uh, one star, clove balsam, ten foot tall Yankee candle, the stuff of nightmares. Uh, and I shouldn't say he has a disdain for him. I'm sure it's all about the juice. But, uh, yeah, some of the ones that we really adore, he didn't like. So, let's see, which other ones? Oh, and then, you know, uh, just to bring it all full so circle, uh, La Homme, I'm not going to read it. La Homme, Ideal Cologne by Garland. Uh, got four stars. Grapefruit vetiver. Uh, really played up the fact about the grapefruit note lasting. He was really impressed by that. Uh, you know, gave it a good uh, thing about Terry Wasser. Uh, you know, pretty good sized paragraph. Took up about a half a page. So, yeah, you know, he, he liked that. Um, the only thing I could say about uh, the guy that seems a teensy bit unusual, uh, but it is and it isn't. Uh, he likes Gorilla fragrances quite a bit, and he also seems to always uh, like Nikolai uh, for the most part. Uh, now, the latter one, I know New York was his signature scent, or it was in the previous guide, I think, for about a decade. Uh, so, yeah, he has some fondness, probably some connection, you know, like a, a rapport with that house, I mean by that. And uh, Gorilla, yeah, he, he you know, seems to like it. Is there anything wrong with either one of those? No. Uh, you know, I seem to have a, a fascination with Lalique, and... Uh, you know, kind of gravitate towards that. Dame Perfumery is another one that I'm starting to kind of like, yeah, they do some good stuff. So, uh, you know, he does have that, uh, so keep that in mind. It seems like he has a fondness for both of those. And lastly, uh, should you buy the guide? Yes. Uh, should you buy the previous guide? Yes. Uh, how many books are written about fragrances? Not many, so keep that in mind. You know, I, th I think reading about it, uh, you know, is good. His prose is excellent. Uh, as well as his uh, his uh, Tanya Sanchez's uh, writing, you know, and we could all take uh, probably some uh, page out of their book, literally, you know, and work on that. At least I know I could. Uh, he's a great writer. Uh, he knows the industry, uh, and it is a guide. Uh, it might be even more suited for if you're familiar with uh, these uh, type of reviewers. I think Powerhouse Kings would enjoy this book, uh, that whole web page, uh, because he does cover, especially in the previous one, more of the, the classic fragrances, uh, even if they're not powerhouses. And, uh, you know, me, Fragrance Matt, Lex Ellis, Matt C., uh, Stephen Sprout. Uh, I'm trying to think. If I left anybody out, you know, I always think of that bunch as kind of the core that, uh, you know, likes to look at the older ones, you know, and see where they're at. Uh, uh, compared to today. So, you know, if you're followers of those channels, uh, I would recommend it. But even if you're not, like I say, I think there's so few uh, books written about fragrance, uh, this would be a nice one to have you in your collection. Whew, breathe. I hope that uh, covered it. Uh, I hope I was fair with all that. But yes, he does have some uh, 
uh, preferences and uh, he has smelled a lot and there are some things he did not like so you know keep that in mind uh, and he is a little more mature than probably most people watching YouTube videos uh, so you know the taste might be different in the sense not that he's older but uh, I think Ego East is great because I got that right out of the Marine Corps and it meant something to me well you know take a taken about 10, 15 years previous, and I think that's when Luca was first getting into fragrance. So I think there's some sentimental sentimental moments in all our fragrance journey, and I think that's part of this, and I think it's kind of beautiful, and uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, as usual, there'll be more of these to come, and uh, please, folks, be kind.